Well, welcome to our classic car now. I thought I'd just do a short video talking about some of the cars we have here. Now, long-term followers of the channel and the old classic car website will know pretty much what we're up to here with the old cars and a couple of old trucks that we've got going on. But a couple of people did comment in previous videos saying, have you done a video just talking about the cars that we have here? And I thought, well, I have done in the past, but probably not for a very long time, and there have been quite a few changes since then. And I'm conscious that many, many people have joined the channel, subscribed and so on in recent months in the last year or so, and that's really good. Um, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's time just to do a quick update, just a general update on the, uh, the menagerie of motor cars that are here at OCCHQ. So that when I refer to this, that or the other, you might just have a bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. Because like I say, quite often if I do a tinkering video, it might mention this car or that car and then you might not hear about it for a little while so I thought it's probably just quite a good idea just to do a quick summary, a quick intro of each of the vehicles we've got here and then maybe future tinkering videos will make just a little bit more sense. Okay well first up as it's first one outside we are having a bit of a move around today which is another reason why I thought I'd just do this general overview video. We have the 1947 half ton Dodge pickup truck this is a WC series Dodge truck. This range, uh, this style of truck, was introduced in 1939 as part of the job rated series of vehicles and they were produced all the way through to 1947 with just a bit of a pause during the Second World War. But these post-war uh, vehicles, this 1947, is very very similar, almost identical to those that were built prior to the Second World War. This is a lovely little truck. I've known this one for quite some time and it joined the garage here at OCCHQ late in 2022. Um, but I've known it probably the best part of 13 years and I've always loved the look of it and when it became available I thought we really need to add that to the garage so we did a few little modifications to what we had in the garage already and that allowed us to go and buy this but it is just a lovely original little truck this one spent most of its life many many decades in fact in California which explains why it is so straight and so original most of the paintwork is original there's had a few little bits blown in here and there but yeah, it used to live on a California almond farm over in the USA and it led a fairly easy life I think. This I mean, it's still got the matching plates on it, dated 1963. And those have been there ever since, of course it is UK registered now. But it's just a really bonny, bonny little pickup truck. And unlike so many, it hasn't been hot rodded, it hasn't been patched up, all the original seams everywhere. These cab corners often rot out on trucks like this, same for the sill panel at the bottom of the cab there. Door pillars, they often rot out above the windscreen because you tend to get mice nests in the ledges above there. You probably can't quite see it on this camera. But you often get mice nests behind here. And then they get damp, rot out, and then it rots out above the screen. Um, but it's just such an original truck. There's a few cosmetics that could be improved a little bit in here, but I'm not too worried about that. It's only rust that really concerns me. And this one has very, very little of that. Well, none in fact. And it's never been it's never been welded up at all. You can still see all the original spot welds down here, all the proper seams here. Again, factory spot welds along there. And you can't say that for many of these trucks, so it's just a really good, solid, handy little half ton truck. Anyone that's followed old classic car for any length of time will know that I really like old commercial vehicles. I love cars as well, of course, classic cars and vintage cars of the 20s and 1930s, but I do have a real soft spot for these old trucks and pickup trucks and vans and so on. And I've been fortunate enough to own a few different ones over the years. And this is the latest smaller commercial vehicle that's been here with us. Obviously, I've been around the old cars since the late 1980s, so in that time, I've dragged out all sorts of vehicles from various different places. Some of them ran, but usually involved a trailer winching and a lot of pushing because they often don't run whenever I buy these things. Fortunately, this one did run, 
or it has that need a little bit of TLC just to sort of persuade it into regular use but yeah it's just such a bonny little vehicle like I say we're gonna have a bit of a move around today and that will involve getting some of the others out so I thought this was just an ideal opportunity just to do a little intro overview of what we spend our time and money on here Again, regulars to the channel will have seen this probably many, many times. We use this to attend classic car shows a little bit further afield. It's a Mark I, or NA series, Mazda MX-5. This is a latish example of the Mark I with the 1.8-litre engine. The initial cars, the first cars from the late 1980s, had the 1.6-litre twin-cam engine. This is the 1.8. This is our third Mark I MX-5. We had two many years ago. And when Junior came along, we needed a few extra seats, so they went. Um, but this car is another example of a car that I've known for many, many years. The neighbours who were just across the road from us used to live over there. A uh, retired lady and her husband who died a few years ago. They had this car and they used it just for local pottering. And what I think they did a trip to France once as well. So I've known this one for about 15 years, I would have thought now. Every now and again, I get asked just to sort of cast an eye over it to make sure it's ready for use after a winter's layup. And then I kind of lost touch with it, but I always remember it being in really nice condition. And then I lost touch, they moved away a couple, only a couple of miles or so away. And then I didn't hear anything or think about it for a couple of years. Then I had an email out of the blue to say they were going to get rid of it. They were going to sell it because she was no longer able to drive it. Um, she's got like a hearing dog, so that she wasn't able to carry the dog in a little two-seater anymore. So this had to go. So I thought, well, it's a lovely solid car. I don't think it's been welded up at any point. It's quite original, very original car. One of 300 produced in this colour as the California limited edition. Um, so I thought, well, I'll go and have a look. And when I went actually over there, it was in a shed, really quite grubby. I think the dogs had been in it as well. Uh, it wasn't running, it wasn't MOT'd or anything. So I agreed to buy it off her, recommissioned it and put it on the road. I'm not sure, a couple of years ago, maybe something like that, two, maybe three years ago now, possibly can't quite remember but they're just a really fun little car and even though it's much more modern than say the little truck over there and the things that I'll be showing you in a few minutes it is just a fantastic little car and it is 28 years old now this is a 1995 car so it's not far off it's 30th birthday which is pretty incredible and it's still in really good condition there's a few little bits of paintwork that have faded the, the front end which is plastic they always seem to fade before the rest of it so in an ideal world those maybe would be painted in but as far as I know most of the paintwork if not all the paintwork is original so for the time being we'll just be keeping it original and using it as much as we can but yeah that is our Mark 1 MX-5 Next up, another Dodge truck. Now I'm conscious of the fact that regulars to the channel will know all this, they will have heard it all before, so if you switch off, um, don't blame you at all. Um, but yeah, for the benefit of newcomers to the channel, just a quick background to this old beast. I've had this, I found this in derelict condition in 1995. This is a three-ton Dodge truck from 1940. It was shipped over as a chassis and the front bits to the top of the screen with all the engine and running gear and such like and was bodied by mulliners of Birmingham and it was used by the Royal Air Force in the Second World War early on in the Second World War as a crew bus on a bomber base somewhere or other I don't quite know where about it served I know quite a few of these were made back in the day but it's the only one left now it's the sole survivor of a Dodge it's a VK62B so it's, the front end is very similar to the little half ton truck over there and in fact the nose cone is pretty much identical but everything else on this is scaled up the wings are longer the track is wider the engine is much bigger this is about 5.4 litre the side valve engine in there whereas the pickup truck is about 3.6 or 3.8 something like that um, but yeah ever since i stumbled across this in 1995 this has been a bit of an obsession one way and another it was a wreck and a few years i mean i kept it in barns and so on for a little while which was getting a bit boring because uh, being reliant on storage for large vehicles is always a bit of a headache and every time you have to move it it requires the services of a low loader and that's always a bit of a palaver and it's expensive as well um, so we we were thinking of moving house this was in the late 90s um, no early 2000s rather and I thought we need to find somewhere that's got room for it. and fortunately this garage was already here the garage had been here a very very long time it did need a bit of modification because the, the roof beams which are up there now they used to come across a sort of this height um, because only cars had ever been installed in here before and of course the height of this required some modifications so a friend of mine who's a blacksmith made a new frame to go inside the existing roof to get the clearance and also raise the doors up a little bit just so we could get the height in order 
that this dodge could fit in here and this was transported over we had it dropped off in next door's yard and then we dragged it round and it lived in here pre-restoration for a few years before finally going away i think it was about 2007 something like that go away to be restored and uh, that took place over a number of years and i could probably write a book about that experience as well but at least it's all back together again now it only goes out every now and again um, but uh, that wasn't really the point the whole point was to save it and rescue it because another winter outside would have probably seen it off and it would uh, i couldn't bear the thought of it rotting away this old girl after all these years because it's just such a unique vehicle when we stumbled across this i just could not believe the styling i just think the styling of this era of truck it's just spectacular just wonderful wonderful shape you know the beautiful curve of the wings that front panel all this going on here just just an incredible looking thing i thought you know but it was in a bad bad way um, but fortunately at least now everything was stripped it was stripped to a complete bare frame there are videos already on the channel which sort of shed a little bit of light on that restoration so i won't go into it in too great a depth here but that is the vehicle that you're looking at here and after the war because you may have spotted all this old sign writing on the sides after the war it was converted into a race car transporter the seats by that point had long since gone in the back the owner he used to race a straight eight grand prix alfa romeo an ex-scuderia ferrari alfa romeo big 3.8 liters twin supercharged alfa and he needed something to carry it in so he bought this and this used to take the alfa to post-war race meetings at goodwood uh, silverstone hill climbs prescott chelsea walsh all those kind of places charter hall up in scotland this thing went all over the place in the late 1940s and early 1950s i, I managed to track down the two mechanics that used to drive this after the war and they were able to get, tell me all sorts of stories about driving this and some of the escapades they got involved in okay so that's the two dodges mentioned now we have this a 1952 ford anglia e494a and i think rather than talk about it here this one needs to come out so we will i'll go and find harley he can bring this one out and then we can talk a little bit more about this characterful old ford This little grey Fergie has been with us for quite a while as well, it hasn't run for a couple of years but with a little bit of TLC and some fresh fuel it will start again. It's just such a super original little car this is. There are a couple of other videos, well more than two videos about this particular car elsewhere on the channel so I won't go into too much detail here. Suffice to say it was built in 1952, it came off the road in the early 1960s and it was laid up for many many years and then was uh, dragged out of a garage apparently just a few years ago the engine was rebuilt but everything else was just left original warts and all but i just love the fact that that paint was put on at dagenham in 1952. it's a very sweet running little car it's super quiet engine and for one of these it actually drives really really nicely it's very similar to driving a pre-war car even though this is actually 1952 um, and then shortly afterwards they stopped making these but they used the overall body shell and then came along the 103 e pop which was like a stripped down slightly even more basic version of the anglia albeit with the larger prefect engine the 1172 cc engine but this is just super original you can see the the old pin striping there and it gets a bit thinner in places where it's worn away and it comes back again back again then starts fading away as you go along the rear panel here so it's just super super duper original and if you know anything about your pops and things you'll know they often rot out on the door pillars here but not this one next service due 40,706 miles according to the shell lubrication service that would have been around in the early 1960s so next service at 40,706 and the current mileage 40,488 so it's not even got to the next service uh, mileage yet but it's just a really original lovely little car this is right well anyway that's the Ford Anglia introduced like I say if you want to know any more about any of the cars on here um, there are other videos that I've uploaded previously that look at them in a little bit more detail this is just a quick overview 
Well, it's a fairly recent addition, a proper old Bakelite cap, petrol filler cap. But yeah, it's just a lovely original car and that is the kind of condition that I really, really like old cars to be in. But it's so hard to find them where they haven't been got out, restored, over-restored or worse, hot-rodded. I don't struggle finding people to, or rather person, to move these things about. All good practice. Right. You in there? Reverse is where first would normally be because it's only a three speed gearbox in these cars. So he's just going to pop that over there, no pun intended. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do. And next we will get the little Morris out because I want to get the little Morris Miner, a 1932 Morris Miner, I want to get that nearer the door. So as this isn't going to be used for a couple of months or so, it makes sense to just move things around so I can get the Morris out and maybe even progress it just a little bit more. Okay, next is the little Morris. Let's get that out. If you wondered just how bad Big Dodge's panels were, here are the original sign written panels from the truck. That's on the other side. As you can see, not great. Which is why it had to be fully stripped and restored all those years ago, but I kept the original sign written panels. And the plan is to trim these down, protect them, oily rag them, probably put them up on the wall sometime. That's the idea with these. And there's the original back doors just behind there with the old SU logos on. Yeah. <laughs> SU fuel pumps and carburetors. Never throw anything away. This is Morris dates to 1932, and this is the original Morris Minor. Morris Minor isn't a post war thing only. This is the original Morris Minor. This is 1932, the earlier cars had a slightly different engine. This is a side valve engined car. It's a little two-seater. This was the £100 car when these were on sale back in the early 1930s. But we just need to get it up this little ramp here yeah, and push it outside. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a hand. Yeah, I'll give you a hand, don't worry. That's it, keep pushing. Perfect on a day like this. I did actually do quite a lot of work to the engine on this one, replaced several valves and so on. If you saw the video that I uploaded just a few weeks ago, you'll see that we did actually have this running again for the first time in many, many years. The idea of this move around is to make this a little bit more accessible. Because the idea is I'm going to try and progress this a little bit, all being well, this year. I need to get something done with it. I had to get on with it or get it gone, but I do love pre-war cars and this is the only pre-war car we've got, even though the Anglia, the date of that, the original design is very much pre-war, it was built post-war, but this is the only pre-war build car we've got and I do think it's just a great little car. So there we go, I did take the wings off and the bonnet off a little while ago, but it all unbolts, so it's all nice and easy, a simple SU carburetor there. Just pushing this so that the Anglia can go down in the bottom part of the garage for the time being. There's the dashboard hidden away, tucked away under there. Like I say, this is the forerunner, These, this era of Morris Minor, which was built until about 34 or 35. It's the forerunner to the Morris 8, which is the little Morris that you do see a lot more often at shows. But these pre-war miners, not so much now. And I just love the shape, the way the tail just drops off. It's quite a curvy little shape, still on its original registration number. Original logbook with it after all these years. It's just a bonny little thing. It's been off the road since about 1970 or 71, somewhere like that. So this little Morris here, we bought this about 14 years ago, somewhere like that. And I've done a fair bit of work to it, but progress did stall. And other bigger projects came along that needed my attention and money, of course. Um, but I do hope this year to do a little bit more work on this one and also on the other cars that are in the garage, which is very, very much a long-term project. But this, I brought this from a lady and she'd been given this in the 1960s as her 21st birthday present. What a fine present to be given, I say. 
um, and she was very, very keen on this car. It had been sat for many, many years in an old outbuilding behind her house. A couple more gems sourced this morning for the Garage of Delights. A lovely old Wesco oil can. Just about to see the name there on the top. Nesco, Birmingham, England. Really nice little thing. Probably won't be able to pick it up, but it's dated. I'm not sure if it'll pick this up. 1959. Stamped just on the bottom there. So that's a really bonny little thing to go with all the many other oil cans that I rarely use in the garage. And then there was this. A little Shelly Jack. Not quite sure of the age of this one. I would guess probably 1930s, something like that. It's got a very narrow collar on here. So that would be designed to go underneath either a front axle beam because most cars had a solid front axle left to right which you could jack under the centre of so it's either that or it's designed to go under a fairly narrow chassis rail a bit like on the 1932 Morris it's a very bonny little Shelley jack quite a lightweight one quite useful there are a couple of numbers on the side there but yeah what a little bobby does that is so this winds out and it winds up and down as and when you need it so that's quite a good little thing. We'll just oily rag that up and that'll be a very welcome addition to the garage. Yeah, great stuff. Control. Okay, well that's tucked away down in the corner here, it's nice and safe here and uh, like I say it's going to be off the road for a couple of months or so, so it'll be quite happy just sitting there I think. Okay, next one, and uh, viewers like I say of recent videos will have recognised this one. This is a Renault 4 CV or the Renault 750 as it was sold in this country because this is a right hand drive UK market car. It's rear engined, water cooled. Been doing a little bit of work around the back of here. But yeah, you can see all the louvers on the bonnets, the engine cover there. So that it was registered in 1954, assembled here in the UK from basically a French kit of parts, although there was some local content that go into these cars. This one we got late in 2022. We've been doing a little bit of fettling with it recently, but it has been to a number of car shows. And it's just a wonderfully oddball little car. The previous owner, I mean, I actually bought it from a dealer, but the previous proper owner has actually been back in touch only in the last few days, wondering whether he could actually buy it back. Now, I don't particularly want to sell it, but I have been thinking, as I've touched upon in previous videos, I do really need something old that we can go to sort of classic car shows just a little bit further away and turn up in something properly old. Whereas at the moment we're using the MX-5, which sometimes feels like a little bit of a cheat, even though it is 28 years old, so it's not exactly a spring chicken. Um, so I'm sort of a little bit in two minds because uh, one of the reasons we bought this was so that Mrs. OCC could drive this to shows and we take the truck. Um, that was the idea, but she's not that keen on driving this, to be honest. So that kind of defeats the object a little, little bit, um, but it isn't a deal breaker. So I'm a little bit in two minds. I can't see me ever bothering to advertise it exactly anytime soon. But if this previous owner comes forward and, you know, if he's willing to pay whatever I paid for it, you know, um, I would think about letting it or consider letting it go simply to enable us to raise a few quid and space for just a longer legged replacement maybe something like an mg magnet a za magnet or something on those lines something with a slightly bigger engine and something that could cruise along quite happily at 50 or so for slightly longer trips away but we'll have to see anyway but at the moment there are no plans for the renault to go so that's just a, a lovely little car and in the background here yeah, looking a little bit dusty i'm afraid it does get a bit dusty out here is our 1956 Standard 8. This is a family favourite with Harley in particular. He's got his eyes on this as his first classic car. I did make some noises about possibly letting this go, but um, 
that didn't meet with universal approval so I think this will probably be sticking around and we'll just sort of fettle this up a little bit as we go along there's a few bits of bits and bobs needed doing here and there I recommissioned this a couple of years ago did the brakes and a few other jobs as well made up some brake pipes sorted the charging system out did the dynamo the voltage regulator a few other bits and pieces as well and it actually runs quite nicely uh, we use that quite regularly all throughout the year any weather really it's, a, it's not immaculate by any means it's not a show car by any stretch of the imagination but it's just a bonnet little car and quite rare too which is why we like it i've had standards before i used to have a standard 10 with a stand drive transmission and a little standard 10 companion a little estate car version of these bonnet little standards of the 1950s and as an alternative to the a30s and a35s I think these are great little cars. Let me know in the comments what you think about these, or indeed these, or the Anglia, and the other things we've featured in the video so far during this little walk around of the vehicles here at OCC HQ. And that just leaves one more to talk about. Now I'm assuming all the regulars to the channel will have long since switched off because they know all this already. But for the benefit of new viewers, this is our 1960 Austin A40 Farina, the Mark I a40 Farina, originally in Farina Grey, and this was bought new by my great uncle and great aunt in 1960 from Pikes of Exeter. And they owned it all the way through until the late 1980s, then it came to us in the late 1987. And in fact, I passed my test on this while I was, at the time, I was still piecing my Spitfire together. So this is the very first car that I ever ran on the road. Um, like I say, I passed my test in December. Of 1987 and pushed put it straight into service and i use this as a daily for quite a few years on and off i used to go to school at the time i was doing a levels at school and i'd regularly park this in the teacher's car park much to their annoyance and yeah this was just a bonny little car we went all over the place in this it needs a bit of work now as you can see but it's not actually that bad i've got quite a few panels to go on it panels to go at the bottom of the wings there sills i've got new on stock sills and front wings to go on um, so this is one of those sort of projects that bubbles away in the background and you do a little bit every now and again but then something else comes along and distracts you and uh, from the main event uh, so lately I've been thinning things out a little bit in terms of project cars that kind of thing and uh, I really just want one vehicle that is a big project which is this one because I have to get this one back on the road the little Renault was bought because that one's already been restored at some point and the standard runs the Anglia runs the Morris is also a project but not it's a very different sort of project really there's a bit of work to do here and there but it's not like a weldathon like the a40 will be so it's very different and like that's the only pre-war car that's here nowadays so i don't really want to let that one go so that will probably be staying same with the dodge pickup the dodge pickup that's been sort of recommissioned a little bit over the last few years I've just been finishing that off since I bought it towards the end of last year. So that really is just a quick summary of the cars that are here at OCC HQ. Um, like I said, there have been other cars over the last few years, but a little while back I just decided I've got to slim things down a little bit, trim things down, get rid of some of the, the major projects, leave me move with just this and the little Morris really as the, the bigger projects and everything else is more just a case of keeping them going. And at least that way it might just free me up enough time to at least make some useful progress with this but whether it'll happen or not i don't quite know because the thing with any old car is every old car even this one here every old car is a project just to greater or lesser extent you know you buy a car that's all been gone through and so on but there's still work to do this one was restored extensively some years ago the little renault but I don't think it was ever really used on the road particularly. Um, I will talk a little bit more about that in a separate video. Um, but there's, there's a lot of, if you can imagine a house that's been built but not moved into, when you actually finally do move in and you start using it, there's just like a snagging list. And that's a little, been a little bit the case with this one. But I think we are more or less on top of that now. And we've got a handle on what needs doing. And I've done quite a lot of it already. But anyway, that is just a quick look at... The old cars that are here at OCC HQ. So this way, hopefully, newer members and joiners of the channel and so on will understand a little bit what it is that we are messing around with here back at base. Well, anyway, I hope that was of interest. Just a quick walk around, quick shifty. Some of the things we're messing with here at OCC HQ. If you've got a particular favourite, 
let me know in the comments of course you may have spotted the OCC mug merchandise now available so that's another great way of supporting the channel and everything we do here anyway there'll be many many more videos along very very soon so bye for now And a quick clean up and a drop of oil later it comes up looking just like that it's just brought up the remains of the black paint a treat in fact if you look at the width of the collar on the top of there it's a bang on match for the little Morris's chassis so that would be the perfect little jack for this car <laughs>